Hello everyone, my name is Darina Panicheva and I will present the work entitled Automatic Extraction of the Mitral Valve Cordy Geometry for Biomechanical Simulation. Heart diseases remain one of the major causes of death in the developed world. Often the development of such medical conditions is associated with mitral valve malfunction. Mitral valve is one of the four cardiac valves that provides one-way blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. It is composed of two flat leaflets that are supported by the cords fixed on the papillary muscles um, and the line defining the hinge of the movement of the leaflets is called annulus and you can see it here in red. The treatment of the valve pathologies may involve surgical intervention, which is a challenging task since the surgeon has to anticipate the behavior resulting from the procedure. As a result, the repair outcome is highly dependent on the surgeon's experience. A computational model having geometry specific to the patient would allow clinicians to simulate medical gestures and their outcomes and in such a way to choose the most appropriate repair technique. This would improve the rate of success of treatment and also contribute to global scientific understanding. In the state-of-the-art models, the valve geometry is either simplified, as you can see on the leftmost image, or detailed but obtained in highly controlled environments, or based on subject image data but relies on manual segmentation being a tedious and time-consuming task. So, no automatic method for complete geometry extraction was proposed yet, especially few approaches were developed for the cordy. In this work, we propose methods to provide chordal representation being compatible with a biomechanical model and obtain it automatically from micro CT images. Here you can see an example uh, of the image in three views. The choice of this imaging modality is explained by a compromise between data precision, as all the components of the valve can be distinguished, and the proximity to the clinical conditions. The proposed core segmentation pipeline consists of three consequent steps. The first one includes preprocessing and topology-based segmentation. At the preprocessing step, the images are denoised after uh, the edges are extracted using CANI filter, and then, to keep the connectivity information, the points are meshed. Afterwards, the quarry are coarsely segmented using a topology-based procedure. More precisely, the points are labeled according to the topology type of the submesh where they belong, which is the number of connected components of the submesh borders. Uh, we keep only those having two and more connected components corresponding to the tubular structures and their branchings. On the right, you can see the result of the segmentation procedure. Uh, tubular structures are in red, which is a starting point for the subsequent step, uh, extraction of the quarry trees. We propose to track a cord in the form of a tree of interconnected cylinders and branching zones. Uh, using a model fitting ransack like procedure. By a cord, we understand the whole structure originating from the single initial point at a papillary muscle. The resulting tree is then simplified into a set of connected line segments obtained as cylinder uh, center lines and approximated skeletons of branching zones. Here you can see an example of resulting trees of connected cylinders and branching zones. Each cord is shown in a separate color. The approach allows to segment the complex core structures with uh, multiple branchings. Uh, the cylinders and branching uh, zones are then represented as line segments, uh, as shown on the right in green. Before the simulation, we must ensure that the obtained core trees are consistent with the biomechanical model. The trees may be not directly suitable because of, first of all, the slug presence. In our case, the initial configuration corresponds to the closed valve state. Quarry have to be in tension. And the quarry having slug, schematically shown here in red, may cause unrealistic simulation outcomes, uh, for example, bulging. Uh, secondly, some trees do not completely agree with the anatomical characteristics. As only uh, bifurcations can be present, a configuration uh, with uh, three segments originating from the same point, as shown on the slide, is not possible. To tackle this task, we introduce a method based on optimization procedure for the branching nodes rearrangement, considering several different constraints. Uh, anatomical, mechanical constraints uh, that query our intention, and uh, image data, uh, which takes into account the query contours. The anatomical constraints include the limits for the angles between the segments that form a bifurcation. Uh, these angles are the straightness uh, angle theta between the base uh, segment and the branching segments by sector, and uh, the branching angle alpha, the angle between the branching segments shown here in red. Uh, 
Uh, to quantify the slug of a quart, we propose to estimate a straightness cost as the sum of the angle theta and minimize it uh, to find a branching non configuration in tension, as shown here in green. To avoid putting all the branching nodes in one point, we define a discrete space of solutions for the branching nodes. Uh, the points uh, that are in the vicinity of the initial branching nodes positions, um, as shown here in blue. And finally, the image-based constraint is expressed by the total cost of the three segments points obtained from a cost map, which indicates the level of proximity of the point to the quarry center, while penalizing going out of the quarry contours. A slice of such a map you can see here on the slide, where the quarry contours are displayed in red. We perform an exhaustive search among different combinations of branching node positions, and we choose to order the constraints, constraints while privileging the mechanical uh, constraint and only after apply the image-based one. Here you can see an example of an optimized tree. After the optimization, uh, the quarry segments are more centered in the image and are more straightened. For the trees with faulty topology cases, as this one, additionally, topology optimization is performed. Uh, to do so, on the image cost is taken into account, as slack minimization is not appropriate locally at one branching. So first, we generate a set of compatible topology configurations by exhaustive search, and then the best configuration is chosen as the one having uh, the minimum image-based cost. For a given example, it is the configuration on the right. Uh, we believe that the application of this optimization step gives a more realistic quarry representation and thus would provide a better base for the simulation. Uh, the procedure is quite fast, it takes only 2 seconds for the topology correction and 5 seconds for the node position optimization per quart in average. Uh, moving on to the validation procedure. We prepared a ground truth ourselves uh, by manual segmentation, uh, which uh, was a cumbersome task even for a skilled user. Uh, to compare the results, we decided to represent manually segmented quarry in a form of trees and uh, to assess the quality of the segmentation based on the graph similarity between the ground truths and automatically extracted trees. Uh, to compare two graphs, we use a method based on graph at a distance, GED. GED is calculated as the sum of the costs of the modification operations required to align the two graphs. Uh, the operations include substitution, insertion and deletion of both nodes and edges. Uh, as the complexity of the, graph, uh, of the graphs may vary a lot, we propose to normalize the metric with a so-called GED max, uh, which corresponds to the total mismatch for a given graph. And the GED max is calculated um, as um, a sum of all edge and nodes uh, costs. A total set of 72 quarry was examined. 87.5% uh, of tested quarry were correctly extracted, which corresponds to the values of GED less than 0.6. And uh, for 40 quarry, the actual match was found. Uh, here there are two examples of such quarry. Uh, higher values of the GED correspond to some inaccuracies, such as shown here on the slide. The final part of the presentation will concern the reproducing of the valve behavior at peak systole via biomechanical simulation. The leaflet uh, surface was segmented manually and the quarry were prolonged uh, till the leaflet surface like it is shown uh, on the right. Uh, for the simulation we used a structural a final element uh, based model. The leaflets are represented as triangles and quarry as elastic rods. Points corresponding to the papillary muscles and annulus displayed in yellow uh, were modeled as zero dis displacement points. For our test, we have taken three quarry configurations, uh, ground truth quarry, quarry obtained with our segmentation method, and uh, the same quarry set, but with uh, enforced slack. In our experiments, uh, we reproduce uh, the closed valve state. In order to evaluate the results, we must first of all check the coherence of the simulated valve behavior. Uh, the valve must remain sealed if the quarry are not slack, and otherwise more leaflet bulging must be observed. Uh, to quantify the results, we propose uh, to use two metrics. First one is phone mesa stress distribution, and the second one is the bulging volume, which is the volume between the leaflet surface at the beginning and at the end of the simulation. The stress distributions obtained for the three cases were analyzed, 
and uh, the results are quite similar to those found in the literature and are in similar ranges of values. Uh, maximum values are between 0.35 and 1 megapascal. Uh, lower stress values are absorbed for the query configuration with slack, while the query obtained with our method spreads the stress similarly to those uh, segmented manually. Uh, then the outcomes for these three configurations were compared by the leaflet profiles in the cut plane uh, shown here on the left. As it can be seen, the profiles for the ground truth and our method are similar. In both cases, uh, the valve remains sealed. Uh, however, for the configuration with enforced slack, a more important bulging is observed. Finally, the map of bulging volume differences with ground truth query for the configurations with and without slack was calculated. We can see that considerably more leaflet bulging is observed for the slack query. And from this, we can conclude that straightening of the query can improve the simulation outcome. Uh, to sum up, in this work, a group of methods for automatic query extraction was proposed, allowing to obtain a representation suitable for the simulation with a biomechanical model. Secondly, we proposed a discriminative graph-based validation procedure. And finally, we demonstrated an application for the closed valve set state simulation. Uh, the similarity of the obtained results to ground truth indicates that the proposed query extraction approach can provide a, a reliable input for the biomechanical model. In perspective, the results on a larger dataset must be obtained. And to improve the query modeling in the upper part closer to the leaflets, uh, where the detection is disturbed the most, we plan to adapt a heterogeneous query model shown here in red, while keeping the detection in the lower part uh, displayed here in blue. Thank you for your attention.